the affirmative task we have now is uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order, because the global order is changing again. And the institutions and the rule that worked so well in the post-World War II era for decades, uh, they need to be strengthened, and some have to be changed. So we have to do what we do best. We have to lead. We have to lead. We have to update the global rules of the road. We have to, we have to do it in a way that maximizes benefits for everyone, because obviously it's overwhelmingly in our interest. This is not a zero-sum game. It's overwhelmingly in our interest that China prosper, that Mongolia prosper, that nations big and large, east and west. We have to level the playing field so that American companies and workers can compete in the world, that the competition is fair and it's healthy. To the first point, we came into office facing the worst financial recession since the Great Depression. We had to unfreeze the credit markets, reform the financial system, inject demand back into the economy. And while this agenda is far from complete, we've made significant progress with all of your help. The economy has now added private sector jobs every month, disappointing this month, but they nonetheless added jobs. Even so, we've still found that the time uh, there's a, a need for an ambitious affirmative agenda. We strengthened and signed three free trade agreements. I know I'm referred to in the White House as the White House optimist. You know, I read that all the time. Well, it's uh, like I'm the new guy. As my grandfather would say, like, I just fell off the turnip truck yesterday. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I've been there longer than any of them. And I hope you all haven't noticed that, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm afraid it's self-evident. But I'm optimistic, not out of naivete. I know the history of the journey of this country. The history of the journey of this country is every single challenge. We've unleashed the American people and all of you.